of the rose is Chaucer's tales The brutal feudal system Holy crusades, bubonic plague Can't say that we've really missed them So dark and barbaric, so dull and mundane That was so Middle Ages That was so Charlemagne to the Renaissance with poets, painters, and bond vaults, and merry minstrels who stroll the streets of London, a strum in their lutes, in puffy pants and pointy leather boots. Welcome to the Renaissance, where we ooh and ah, you with zombies. We're so progressive, the latest and the greatest, we bring it to you with much ado. A modern flair. See us in our petty coats and parting gales. Our trendy beards we trim to look like swallowtails. Recall the Elizabethans. They're all a bunch of heathens. Heathens had a tree for you nowhere. While witches are burning and wars tend to start, we bring you moments of culture and art. Culture! Renaissance, whose literal translation from French into English is rebirth, appears in English writing from the 1830s. The word occurs in Jules Michel's in 1855 work. 
Historia de France, the word Renaissance has also been extended to other historical and cultural movements, such as the Carolian Renaissance and the Renaissance of the 12th century. The intellectual basis of the Renaissance was its own invented version of humanism, derived from the rediscovery of classical Greek philosophy, such as that of Protagoras, who said that man is the measure of all things. This new thinking became manifest in art, architecture, politics, science, and literature. Early examples were the development of perspective in oil painting and the recycled knowledge of how to make concrete. Though availability of paper and the invention of metal movable type of sped, dissemination of ideas from the latter 15th century, the changes of the Renaissance were not uniformly experienced across Europe. The Renaissance was a period in Europe from the 14th to the 16th century, regarded as the cultural bridge between the Middle Ages and modern history. It started as a cultural movement in Italy, specifically in Florence, in the late medieval period and the latter spread to the rest of Europe, marking the beginning of the early modern age. Leonardo da Vinci was the typical Renaissance man with many talents. While we know of him as an artist, he was also an engineer, scientist, and mathematician. He is someone for whom mathematics features a lot in his works. This includes such works as The Last Supper, The Vitruvian Man, and The Adoration of the Magi, to name but a few. It is, however, the book The Da Vinci Code by Dan Brown, where many will have come across the Da Vinci's ideas about mathematics and art. Mathematics and Da Vinci's Works Two of Leonardo Da Vinci's best-known works that employ mathematics are The Last Supper and The Mona Lisa. Each applies mathematical principles of perspective, golden ratio, and proportions in its composition. In his painting of The Last Supper, he uses the golden ratio to position the different elements in the painting. He uses the ratio to place people in the table, the proportions of the walls and windows, and the background. By using mathematical principles, Da Vinci helps bring together the different elements in the painting. Da Vinci's painting of the Mona Lisa uses the golden ratio in its structure. Some see the beauty of the picture as being its use of the golden ratio. Central elements of the composition use a golden rectangle all over the painting. While the golden rectangle is a rectangle, the difference comes from shape's dimensions. The dimensions reflect the golden ratio the golden ratio is a visible in Mona Lisa's face. If a rectangle bounds the face and this rectangle is divided by drawing a line across her eyes, it creates another golden rectangle. The result is that the ratio of the length of the Mona Lisa's head to her eyes is also that of the golden ratio. On the rest of the body, it is possible to draw other golden rectangles. Durer Super Magic Square Each row, each column, and each diagonal adds up to 34. These are the traditional magic properties. But there is more magic to be found here. There are actually 13 different ways of dividing this square into 4 groups of 4 cells with each group of 4 cells adding to 34. The menu in the outlet can be used to select among these. The positions in the Durer square can be seen as a finite vector space in which each set of four groups of four cells is a set of parallel affine planes. Durer's magic square has additional properties. The sum in any of the four quadrants as well as the sum of the middle 
four numbers are all 34. It is thus a Noman Magic Square. A Noman Magic Square is a 4x4 magic square in which the elements in each 2x2 two two corner have the same sum. In addition, any pair of numbers symmetrically placed about the center of the square sum to 17, making the square even more magical. Francisca Luca Bartolomea de Pasciali, sometimes called Pasciali or Pasciola, was an Italian mathematician, Franciscan friar, collaborator with Leonardo da Vinci, and an early contributor to the field now known as accounting. He is referred to as the father of accounting and bookkeeping in Europe and he was the first person to publish a work on the double entry system of bookkeeping on the continent. He was also called Luca di Borgo after his birthplace, Borgo San Sepolcro, Costani. Nicolo Fontana Tartaglia was an Italian mathematician, engineer, a surveyor, and a bookkeeper from the then Republic of Venice. He published many books including the first Italian translations of Archimedes and Euclid and an acclaimed compilation of mathematics. Tartaglia was the first to apply mathematics to the investigation of paths of cannonball known as ballistics. In his Nova Scientia, his work was later partially validated and partially superseded by Galileo's studies on falling bodies. Lodovico Ferrari was born on February 2, 1522 and died on October 5, 1565. He is an Italian mathematician who was the first to find an algebraic solution to the biquadratic or quartic equation, an algebraic equation that contains the fourth power of the unknown quantity but no higher power. Geronimo Caldano was an Italian polymath was whose interest and proficiencies rings through those of mathematician, physician, biologist, physicist, chemist, astrologer, astronomer, philosopher, writer, and dumbbell. He was one of the most influential mathematicians of the Renaissance and was one of the key figures in the foundation of probability and the earliest introducer of the binomial coefficients and the binomial theorem in the Western world. He wrote more than 200 works on science. In his 1545 book, Ars Magna, he made the first systematic use of negative numbers in Europe, published with attribution the solution of other mathematicians for the cubic and quartic equations, and acknowledged the existence of imaginary numbers. As he was an illegitimate child, he could not enter the college of physicians. Despite this, he was a relatively successful physician. The first description of typhoid fever is attrib attributed to him. Today, he is mainly known as a mathe mathematician. He made some discoveries in algebra. He proposed ways to solve cubic and quartic equations. Niccolo Fantano Tartaglia told him about the solution of one particular, particular cubic equation. This caused a long fight. His student, Lodo Vico Ferrari, solved the equartic equations. Cardano also speaks about imaginary numbers in the same book, Ars Magna. Cardano was often short of money and gam gambled compulsively. A book of his, Liber di Ludo Aleje, book on games of chance in the English, contains the first systematic treatment of probability, as well as a section on cheating, he wrote it 1564, but it was first published in posthumously in 1663. Rafael Bombelli, baptized on 20 January 1526, died 1572, was an Italian mathematician born in Bologna. He is the 
author of a treatise on algebra and is a central figure in the understanding of imaginary numbers. He was born to Antonio Masoli, a wool merchant, and Yamante Sudairi, a tailor's daughter. The Masoli family was once quiet powerful in Bologna. When Pope Julius II came to power in 1506, he has sailed to the ruling family, the, the Bentivoglius. The Bentivoglius family attempted to retake Bologna in 1508 but failed. Raphael's grandfather participated in the coup attempt and was captured and executed. Later, Antonio was able to return to Bologna, having changed his surname to, to Bembeli to escape the reputation of the Masoli family. Rafael was the oldest of six children. Rafael received no college education, but was in instead taught by an engineer architect by the name of Pier Francisco Clementi. Uh, Bombelli felt that none of the words on algebra by the leading mathematicians of his day provided a careful and thorough exposition of the subject. Instead of another convoluted triatis that only mathematician could comprehend, Raphael decided to write a book on algebra that could be understood by anyone. His text would be self-contained and easily read by those without higher education. In the book that was published in 1572, entitled Algebra, Bombelli gave a comprehensive account of the algebra known at the time. He was the first European to write down the way of performing. Compu performing computation with negative numbers. The following is an excerpt from the plus times plus makes plus. Minus times minus makes plus. Plus times minus makes minus. Minus times plus makes minus. As was intended, Bombelli used simple language so that anybody could understand. Simon Stevin is the father of fractions. According to Stevin, the notation represented full integers, not fractions or parts of integers. In this sense, he did not set out to create decimal numbers. He believed that claiming integer status for all digits in the number was advantageous to its practical application. In 1585, Stevin published a small pamphlet, La Tende or the Tent, in which he presented an elementary and true account of decimal fractions and their daily use. Although he did not invent decimal fractions and his notation was rather unwieldy, he established their use in day-to-day -day mathematics. He declared that the universal introduction of decimal coinage, measures, and weights would be only a question of time. The same year, he wrote the Ledismi, the decimal, on the same subject. How did Simon represent the decimals? Stevin's system of decimals was based on integers, which he called the units of commencement. Following from those were new units that seven named prime, second, three, and so on. These were written by placing signs after the numbers. The sign consisted of a circle number which designated the unit value.